Hello friends, this video on metals and non-metals part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we are talking about uh, reactivity of various metals, we are going to talk about displacement reactions. Now these reactions give better evidence about the reactivity of metals because so far we saw that some metals vigorously react with water, some metals do not react at all with water, some metal reacts with oxygen, some doesn't react at all. So the, there is a lot of variation in the reactivity of metals to different substances. Now these reactions give us a better idea to decide which metal is more reactive than the other metal. So it helps us to tell the reactivity of various metals comparative or relative to each other. So basically we can say let us suppose you are given two metals copper and iron. So how do you know whether copper react is more reactive than iron or iron is more reactive than copper. So it is difficult to answer such questions because the copper might react well with water, iron might not react with water but again on the other hand iron might react with air, copper might not react with air. So these kind of discrepancies might be there. So such reactions so when we talk about displacement reactions, these reactions occur when a metal is put in an aqueous solution and that aqueous solution is a compound of another metal. Okay, let me give you an example. Let us suppose you have a beaker. Inside this beaker, you have copper sulfate solution. It is an aqueous solution. So inside the be beaker, let us say, you have copper sulfate solution and you have put an iron nail inside this solution. So basically you want to see the reaction between iron and copper sulfate solution. So what you are doing metal which is the metal here iron is a metal and iron is put in an aqueous solution and what is the aqueous solution it is a compound of another metal what is that another metal that is copper so basically if you want to see out of iron and copper who is more reactive you can put one metal into a solution of another metal so here we have put iron in a solution of copper sulfate now how this will help you to tell uh, which metal is more reactive we will see that a little later now it has been observed that in this kind of situation for example when an iron nail is put into a copper sulfate solution over a period of time it was seen that the solute color of the solution changes normally copper sulfate solution is blue in color but over a period of time the blue color fades away so why that happens due to the reaction of iron with copper sulfate solution so over a period of time a new thing is formed that is called iron sulfate and due to the formation of iron sulfate the blue color fades away that means iron reacts with copper sulfate solution due to that reaction only you are seeing change in color again if you take some other example let us say again you have taken a beaker with copper sulfate solution now instead of iron now you have put zinc so you have just put a small piece of zinc or a small granule of zinc in copper sulfate solution now in this case also you see that after some time the color changes so the color of zinc is like white so the here also you see that the blue color fades why it fades because reaction happens and formation of zinc sulfate happens due to the formation of zinc sulfate the color of copper sulfate solution fades now another example can be taken where instead of copper sulfate solution you take zinc sulfate solution. So here you have taken zinc sulfate solution and in zinc sulfate solution you have taken a small piece of copper. So it is just the opposite of second scenario. So if this is second scenario and this is third scenario, second and third are just the opposite thing. Here zinc was the metal, solution was of copper, here solution is of zinc and the metal is copper. In this case it is seen that there is no change in color. Why there is no change in color? That means no reaction is taking place. That is why there is no change in color. If some reaction will take place, that means some new compound will be formed. So there will be some change in color. But here there is no reaction taking place. Now that 
is surprising. Now when the here reaction took place, then why there is no reaction taking place here? So that became a question and that is what is answered by the concept of displacement reaction. So the concept is very simple. It says that a more reactive metal will always displace a less reactive metal. More reactive is more powerful. So more powerful person always replaces the less powerful person. So similar thing here. So in now you can take the same example again. So this was your beaker number 2 and this was your beaker number 3. So in this beaker this was your copper sulphate and in this beaker it was your zinc sulphate. In this beaker it was your zinc and in this beaker this was your copper. Now in this case what happened? The color changed. So in this beaker color changed and is this beaker no color change. Correct? So that means what is happening in this beaker? In this beaker reaction is taking place. That is why there is change in color. So what reaction is taking place? Let us try to see. So here the reaction that was taking place was zinc was combining with copper sulphate to form zinc sulphate plus copper. Now the color of copper sulphate was blue. That is why earlier the solution was blue in color. But the color of zinc sulphate is zinc sulphate is actually colorless. So that due to the formation of zinc sulphate gradually the blue color of the solution starts to fade. So that means in this case what is happening if you look at the reaction very carefully zinc is actually replacing copper from copper sulphate solution. So zinc is actually replaced copper and taken the place of copper to form zinc sulphate. That means zinc is more reactive than copper. So as per the concept which I told you that more reactive will displace the less reactive. So here more reactive should be zinc because zinc has displaced copper. So this shows that zinc is more reactive than copper. Now in this scenario what happens? Here copper is reacting with zinc sulphate. Now as I told you the solution will change color only if copper is able to displace zinc. Now what did we see? We see that zinc is more reactive that means copper is less reactive than zinc and a less reactive metal will not be able to displace a more reactive metal therefore copper will not be able to displace zinc. So if you look at this experiment this clearly tells you that zinc has a more zinc has more reactivity than copper so the relative reactivity between zinc and copper can be easily determined with the help of a displacement reaction right so this is the concept of displacement reaction it actually tells you which metal is more reactive than the other metal so the simple concept of displacement reaction is that you have a metal A, you have a metal B. So when you combine metal A with salt solution of metal B, then you, what do you get? You get salt solution of metal A and metal B. When do you get this? Only if metal A is more reactive than metal B. This, this will hold true only in that, that case. If metal A is less reactive than metal B, then there will be no reaction at all. So let us look at an example for this. So what will happen if iron combines with copper sulphate solution? So here iron is metal A and copper is metal B. So in this case, since iron is more reactive than copper, therefore iron will be able to displace copper to form iron sulphate plus copper. So this shows that iron is more reactive than copper. So this is how displacement reactions work. So based on whatever we have discussed so far on physical and chemical properties of metals and non-metals, we can quickly have a comparison between metals and non-metals. So metals are lustrous, non-metals no luster, there is no shine on non-metals, the only exception is iodine. Metals are sonorous, they produce ringing sound, non-metals no ringing sound. Metals are good conductors of heat and electricity, non-metals are poor conductors. So like you can see the conducting wires, they are all metals. Metals are malleable, ductile, but non-metals are not. So non-metals generally, if you try to beat them, they break into pieces. 
metals have high density non metals have low density metal oxides are basic so the oxides of metal for example magnesium oxide or uh, iron oxide they are all basic in nature but non metals their oxides are acidic like carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide they all combine with water to form sulfurous acid carbonic acid etc metals react with water they react with acids non metals do not react with any of them metals react with bases to release hydrogen but non metals react non metals directly do not react with bases but their oxides react with bases to release water so these are some of the distinction between metals and non metals properties thank you please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again